Hey guys, we're going to start a new Let's Play series today. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and roll the introduction. We'll get into the specifics of the game, the save, and everything else right after this. Well, hey guys, RC here. As I said, we're going to be starting a new Let's Play today. So most of you that are on my channel uh, know that my primary game that I play is Football Manager, which is one of the largest, if not the largest, sim game in the world uh, for sports. Uh, well, this is similar, but it's American football. It's American collegiate football. Uh, at the university level, uh, and I, th I think most of the other parts of the world call it university, uh, if you're curious. And uh, feel free, if you're not familiar with the American football game, if you're not familiar with college football, ask questions. I'll be happy to answer anything that you guys have to the best of my ability. I'm a huge college football fan, and as you can tell, I am diehard for the University of Michigan Wolverines in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So what we're going to do is, and most of this first episode will be just setting up the game, talking about it, and then we'll kind of get into to some of the differences uh, from what you usually see in my football manager videos and what you'll see in my American football manager videos, because that's what we'll call it for lack of nothing else. And so very similar to a football manager journeyman, we're going to start off at a low level college or university. Uh, we will be the head coach for that program. We'll do the recruiting and, uh, you know, we'll set up the team and we'll get into everything. Now, the biggest difference, there is no playing out the games. It is strictly a text simulation. So. Basically, you set you set your roster, your depth charts. Um, for an FM comparison, you, you set your starting 11 and then your bench. And then your bench players will play. Uh, there are not limits to substitutions like in uh, Football Manager. Uh, so you have a second string, a, a second 11, a third 11. We call second string, third string players. And they can play quite a few plays and they can go in and out as a coach dis determines. So most of the game itself is run by your assistants. You have three assistants, and we'll look at that once we get more into the game. So I haven't decided exactly how we're going to do each episode, how many games we may cover in an episode, but it will probably be several because basically we'll go in, we'll set the set the depth chart, simulate the game out, and then go through the result. Take a look at statistics, uh, specific information, uh, things of that nature, and uh, and we'll go from there. We'll just kind of play it by ear, and uh, we'll see how it goes. If it works, it works, and if it doesn't, I can always pull the plug on it. But I have had quite a few people ask me to do a Let's Play on this. It is one of my favorite games. And just another unplugged solicitation. If you are interested in this game from an online multiplayer perspective, uh, I am a member at Sim Nation. Uh, and I will put the link in the description of the video below. And you can go over there. We have two leagues that use Bullbound College Football. We also have a league that uses uh, Draft Day Sports College Football by Wolverine Studios, which is also a very good game. And uh, anyway, let's get into it here. So the first thing we're going to do is create a league. Uh, so we're using Bullbound College Football, which is uh, Arlie Ron is the de uh, developer of the game. Uh, Gray Dog Software is the name of his company. And the game did come out in 2004. Five, very unfortunately. Uh, I have been a fan since 2005, and since 2005, we have been begging and pleading 
uh, for an updated game, and it does not look like it will ever happen. Uh, 16 years in, uh, I am not uh, holding my breath anymore. So uh, if you're looking for a more updated game, definitely uh, draft a sports college football is the way you want to go. Uh, but bull bound college football, still very viable, still a very good game, and still viable online leagues with, with lots of owners. Um, so you just have to get over the hurdle of it being a 16-year-old game. So I also have updated to version 1.52, which is the most updated version from 16 years ago. And I am using IC's real world pack. So the college names, mascots, uh, the conference names are all the same. And um, again, if you guys, especially if you're you know overseas somewhere and don't know much about uh, American football, college football in particular, Ask away, and I will do my best to help you understand and explain things in a game sense. Um, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I like to do it in a tutorial type style uh, because I actually sales uh, and I ta I've taught before, so I love to talk and I love to explain stuff. So <laughs> don't be bashful. Uh, so let's create a league. And the first thing you'll notice is all the names are correct. Now, keep in mind, Icy's last update for his real world patch was 2017 or 18, somewhere around there. Um, no, I'm sorry. If no, 2013 or 14. So it's been quite some time. So, what we're going to call this is the YouTube League. I'm doing this on my YouTube channel abbreviated as YTL, and we'll start in 2015. Well, we can start it in 2021, and we will call this the Let's Play Trophy. Single player, and they give you an option on playoffs. You can have a 14, a 16 team playoff, the old BCS format, which was an, an accumulation of newspaper reporters uh, and their rankings, and then multiple computer rankings blended together. And it was the number one team versus the number two team, end of discussion. Or we can go with the current format, which is a four-team playoff. Uh, so we'll go with that. Go with the four-team playoff. Uh, playoff stats, how user to be fired, yes. Underclassmen can declare. So, in university, you have four years of classifications. So it, we will consistently have rotating uh, rosters of players. So when you first come into university, you're a freshman. And then in year two, you're a sophomore, then a junior, and then a senior. And then after you finish your senior year, you graduate or you're no longer eligible because you can only play college football for college sports for four years. There are some, if you're watching this in the future, there were and are currently some extenuating circumstances due to COVID, but that's not in the game and I'm not going to be bothered. <laughs> you can also be, uh, so underclassmen declaring uh, sophomores and juniors can also declare to become professional, which means they leave the college game and go into the professional ranks, which if you are familiar with professional football in America, it's called the NFL, the National Football League. Now, we will not tie in, but there is a way in real life, there is a game, uh, that professional game, that you can actually import your data file from Bullbound into uh, the other game, the pro game, so you have the players continue on with their professional leagues. I'm not going to do that or get into it. Uh, the ACC, so it's all the real conference names. Uh, and then the user team, we're going to start off. I uh, wish there was a way for me to see what the prestige levels were. Well, I do know what I want to check. So let's, let's do this. The ACC, the Big East, the Big Ten, the Big 12 are Power 5 conferences. 
along with the SEC or the Southeastern Conference. Uh, your independents, some are big, some are small. Notre Dame's an independent. Conference USA, the MAC, Mountain West, or what we consider mid-tier. Uh, the Pac-10 is a Power Five. Uh, the Sun Belt and the WAC are considered low-end schools. So let's go in and take a look at Sun Belt. And there is the Louisiana Lafayette Cajuns. Uh, so that is my alma mater. It's where I went to college and graduated from. So we're going to start at that program. I'm going to go down and find Lafayette, Louisiana. Here, my alma mater. Uh, and then staff delegation. The only thing I let them do is academics. I do everything else. And we will create the league. Take just a minute. So again, I'm not sure how many games we'll do each episode. I guess I'll start recording the, the next episode or the first game episode. And just going to kind of wing this. So there's going to be a lot of things that you won't see. We'll touch base on how to do them. Uh, so if we take a look here on the right-hand side, you can see the timeline. This does not change. So you have six weeks of training camp and you have certain things to do in each set of weeks. Then you have 15 weeks of the regular season. This is when the games actually take place. Then you have four weeks, 16, 18, five weeks, because uh, there are no games in week 17. Uh, so you have the conference championships, then you have bowl games and playoffs, and the accumulating in the national championship game uh, as the best team in the country uh, taking place in week 21. Then you go into the off season. Uh, if, if for us to change jobs, we are going to have to receive a job offer. So that is going to be based on our reputation, um, how well our team does in a given season or over a period of seasons, very similar to football manager. Uh, if we do get a job offer, that would be that it'll come to us in our emails and then we can choose to take a job or not. And then once we take a job or decide to stay, then we go into our staff hiring, which is a three week process. Uh, to hire our three assistant coaches. Uh, then there are transfers. So in addition to your players graduating or declaring for the draft, they can also choose to leave your school. This could be for a number of reasons. Maybe they got suspended, uh, but typically in this game, it's due to lack of playing time. So you may recruit somebody that is extremely talented and well thought of, and then he, but he's not quite as you know, maybe he's your second best player at that position. So you he comes off the bench and you know he plays, you know, 10, 10, 15 snaps a game. And at the end of the year he goes, not playing enough, I should be a starter, and he'll leave your school. And then that allows other teams to come in and recruit him all over again. And he can switch to their school. You won't always lose players, but 90% of the time you will if they enter this transfer portal. Uh, and then you have uh, nine weeks or 10 weeks of recruiting, uh, a week to set up your training, uh, which helps players get better. This is going into training camp. This is your off-season workout period, and uh, that takes one week to do. So that's where we're at. So... Let's check our, e and everything, everything is in this first inbox. So you just click on view stage details. It will always bring you back to this screen and it will give you a weekly checklist of everything you've got to do that week. So check email for a welcome message and initial instructions. Set budget and choose a scouting service. Well, first off, let's take a look at our program. So we're going to be the head coach of the Louisiana Lafayette Cage, Raging Cajuns. We have a low prestige of 30, which is one of the lower prestiges in the country. I think, I don't know what it goes down to, maybe 20. 
So this isn't the worst team in the country, but you know, it's not a great team. It's not even a mid-level team. Uh, their conference projection is to win the league. Before you get all excited, there is no promotion or relegation. Uh, there can be movement between conferences, but it's very rare. And, you know, the conference actually has to approach you about switching over. So most of the time that won't happen. Strength of schedule. Uh, there are, what are there, 216 teams in the country, I think. I'd be wrong on that. But we have the 98th hardest strength of schedule. Now, strength of schedule plays a role in the, in the ranking system. It's one of the factors that determine where you get ranked. So a low prestige team like ours that's playing mostly other low prestige teams, we will never have a really hard or really high strength of schedule, which makes sense. So even if we go undefeated, you know, or 11 and 1, you know, win 11 and lose 1 in the course of a season, we still won't be a top 25 program, which is where you have to typically be to have a shot, even a shot of making the playoffs. Now, it only takes 6 wins to make a bowl game. So initially, our goal is to win our win our conference or our league make a bowl game, and then win the bowl game because overall wins, winning a bowl game, those are the two major factors for your prestige to increase. So we could stay at Louis at this program for the entire duration of the save, kind of a climbing the ladder save in, in football manager, and we could eventually build them into a elite prestige program, but it would take forever. So uh, we're going to do this as a journeyman. All right, so what we have to do this week is set our budgets and our scouting service. Emails do not delete automatically, so they'll build up in here. You don't need them. So just delete them after you're done. Go back to stage details. Again, that will always bring you back to the main page. Evaluate your team roster and to set priorities for the budget. All right, well, this tells us all of our players, and I can sort this by position. I can sort it by class, so you have your seniors, juniors, and if you're curious, what do the parentheses mean? So even though a player can only play four years, which is true, you can do what's called a red shirt. So typically you do this in your freshman or sophomore year, and you basically put the player on the bench. He trains. He practices, but he cannot play in any games at all. Um, and as long as he, you know, if it, as long as you redshirt him, if there's injuries, you can remove the redshirt. But if he's active for even one game, he loses that redshirt. So what does a redshirt do? It buys you an extra year. So the way the game works is you will have. Let's look at. Let's look at a tackle here, right? We'll change position. We're not going to really change his position, but we're going to look at this. So it tells you his current weight and his current target weight. And if you change their position, it will give you a different option. So an offensive tackle is a lineman. Their basic job is to block and provide protection. A tackle could become a guard or a center, and this tells me that for a guard, your target weight is 285 to 305. Now, this is really important. He's already 317. If you exceed the maximum target weight for that position, the player will never get better, ever. So they gain weight by weight training. In the off season, so you can, you know. So let's take a, a different look. Let's look at a uh, let's look at a freshman. Same thing. We've got a we've got a tackle here, right? He's a freshman, so he only weighs two ninety nine. Current target weight for a tackle is three seventeen. 
And same thing, if we wanted to make him a guard, 285 to 305. So he's pretty far off, 18 pounds of his target rate for a tackle, but he's only six pounds away from being maxed out or perfect for a guard. And you can see that his future ability would be below average, not just because he's a bad player. Uh, this has a five-star rating system. And if we sort by potential, you can see we have one player that has a four, a handful that are three and three and a half, and everybody else is basically average or below average. So we've got a handful of players that would be considered really good players for our level. Now, these same guys, you know, this, this guy, Shaw, if he was playing for, let's say, LSU or Michigan at, a, at one of the high-level programs, he might only be a two-potential player for that program. So where this differs from Football Manager is when you look at your roster, your squad in Football Manager, your ratings are, your star ratings are based on just your team. In this, it's, it's just overall. So every player is considered the same, but if Michigan recruited Shaw, he would not be a two slash four player. He might be a one slash two and a half player, just because of the higher level of competition. Okay, so, We've looked at the roster, and I've kind of shown you guys a little bit. Team expectations. Win the Sun Belt. Beating each conference opponent, and the board will be very happy. Now, this tells you what kind of offense and defense the team currently runs. We will have the opportunity to change that. This gives you your rival, uh, your team colors, where you play at, capacity, how many fans can attend each game. Um, now, we really don't have finances in this, so finances really don't play a role to the extent they do in Football Manager. They do play a role, and we'll see that when we get into recruiting and in a minute when we set our budget. So there, there is some finances. This gives you a roster breakdown, uh, 15 seniors, 16 juniors, 22 sophomores, 22 freshmen. Now. What's going to happen is we'll probably cut some of these players that aren't really good and will never make our squad. That will free up some additional scholarships. You're only given so many scholarships for your team each season, and it it's like 85 players total. So you know you have you know that's why you're always going to have this breakdown, and you kind of want this to be pretty balanced. Because if you have a season, let's say if let's say that you know we're going to lose 15 seniors, 12 or 13 of them are probably going to be scholarship, which means I'll have 12 or 13 scholarships to sign new players and hopefully improve our team for next year. It costs money to recruit, and so let's say that we have a year where. Instead of 13, 14 scholarships, we have 35 scholarships. We aren't going to have the budget to even try to sign that many players. So you're going to end up not using your scholarships that year, or not all of them, which means you're not going to have the best team that you could possibly have. And then you fall behind, and then it's, it's just an uphill struggle. The other thing this gives you is an almanac. So this gives you the club record. Uh, starting today so 30 you know, if we play for 30 years we'll see a 30-year record for the program here you can also see there are 15 weeks in the season you can play 11 or 12 games you get to choose that and we have to go through scheduling you have to ask other teams if they want to play kind of like scheduling a friendly in football manager and the teams that are on this schedule now, for the most part, are the teams in our conference. Those games are hard-coded in, and you'll play your conference opponents every year. 
The other games that you'll schedule are open games. Now, like you can see, we play my, the Miami Hurricanes, who are the number 11 program in the country. Pretty crazy. Now, in those game options, you could actually set scheduling to be controlled by your athletic director, your director of football, if you want. He doesn't always do the best job, right? So we're going to do that ourselves. All right, let's jump in and let's look at the team budget first. So right now we have $255,000 left. Now, out of that, you could see everything that goes into it. Our recruiting cost, each region. Each region has different groups of players. Cost more to recruit the farther away from home you get. So Louisiana Lafayette is right about there. So if we went all the way out to California, naturally that would cost more money than, say, going to Georgia or Florida, which is within our region. But those states would be more expensive than recruiting in Louisiana. So something to think about. Just, you know, I tend to leave these at default, most of these. Um, medical training, this helps physios in Football Manager. Helps keep you from getting injured. Strength and conditioning is your strength and con your fitness coach, if you want. This helps your players gain the weight and get closer to that target weight, which helps them improve their skills. Academic tutors, if a player doesn't make grades, this is a collegiate program, so they are student athletes, allegedly, and they have to make certain grades or they are suspended and can't play. And there are two... I think there's two suspension periods each season. So very important to make sure you have tutors for the guys that are going to struggle. Also, one of the things that you can look at when you're recruiting players, um, you'll be able to see their GPA, their test scores. Uh, you can also see the salaries of your three coaches. Now, these can't be changed here because those are coded in when you hire your coaches. So we're paying three hundred and seventy-five thousand a year for our offensive coach, four hundred thousand for our defensive coach, and a hundred thousand for our special teams, which in this, which in American football is your punting and your place kicking, so your field goals, extra points. Uh, then you have your scouting, uh, offense, defense, advanced scouting, which kind of gives you in, insight to your next opponent. Uh, your total budget is the sum of all of these. And then so we have a $255,000 budget left. Now, I can reduce some of these if I want to, but that cuts into each thing. I'd have less to recruit. Now, honestly, I'm probably not going to go out west. I could drop that and feel pretty comfortable. In the southeast, I want to make sure that's maxed out. Uh, everywhere else, even the Atlantic East, I could probably reduce that. So I would spend 80% of my recruiting in the Southeast, and then we could probably hop over. In fact, I would like to maybe max out the Great Plains because we could come over across the border and recruit Texas, which is real heavy. Now, each state has different pools of talent, Texas, Florida, California, those are the huge states with a lot of talented players. So, you know, there's a lot of competition in Texas. You've got University of Texas, Texas A&M, SMU, North Texas, uh, you know, and that's just getting started with the big ones. Baylor, uh, Texas Tech are in there. And so, but that's a place we could maybe go find some of the lower end players that might be better. Uh, than Louisiana. Georgia also has quite a few good players historically. So with those adjustments, now we've got 270,000. I'm going to save that. And then we're going to jump in and look at our recruiting service. Now, each region has three recruiting services. So you can see right now we, are, we have chosen Southern Cooking, which is an average uh, Scouting service. Now, this is all made up. None of these are real. But so we could go with Cole Scouting, 
which would cost us 95,000. Southern Cooking is 65,000. And the Legends is only 40,000, but you can see it's poor. What these do is each one gives you less or more intelligence when you're looking at players. My rule of thumb is if you can afford it, always go with the best one. Never, ever go with the worst one, in my opinion. Some people disagree with me, but because we're such a low prestige team, I'm okay with going with the middle one. So we're going to go ahead and keep that. And that means I can come back to the budget. And we've got 270000 So I'm going to go ahead and raise each one of these. Ten thousand dollars special teams special teams because there's two pos we have a long snapper a punter and a kicker you have three positions so basically it's ten thousand per position now i'm doing twenty thousand on that one let's raise it to forty and i still have quite a bit left so let's go ahead and up our scouting our strength and conditioning and our academic tutors to 70000 Now, we haven't touched recruiting yet. Recruiting is going to cost money. So maybe I don't want to do that. I'm going to drop those back. We're going to, see, we're going to go with 185000 That's what we're going to go with. So we finished everything on the checklist. We've looked at everything, so we're going to go ahead and advance the week. Gives you a warning. Cannot change your budget again. Okay. Boom. We've got a new email. So we would, and we get a new checklist for this week. <coughs> and you can see we have progressed. First one is now grayed out. Arrow has moved to the second week. We will choose offensive and defensive philosophy. So this first episode may run a little long just because we're going to try to get through all of this setup stuff. And then in future seasons, we'll blow through it much quicker. Probably won't even show it to you. All right, so check email. That's your philosophies, all right? If you want to read that, you can pause it and take a look at it. But I'm going to move on. All right, setting the team depth chart. I use the suggest button a lot, but basically you have you have each position. You have a quarterback, halfback, which is your primary running back. You have a fullback. Split end and flanker, these are your two wide receiver positions. Tight end, which is also a pass catching, but also a blocking position. They play right at the end of the offensive line. And then you have five offensive linemen, a center, two guards, and then on the outside is two tackles. Uh, a wing back is a specialty position, depending on the type of offense that you might run. You have a short yardage quarterback. So let's say that you have a quarterback that's really, really good at running the ball. And on short yardage, you want him to play. And it might not be your best quarterback. It might be one of these guys down here. You can adjust those as you see fit. So all you would do is click and drag, right? There you go. And that would happen. But right now I'm going to go with this till I actually, because I haven't looked at them yet. Uh, same thing, short yarded running back, third down running back. Third down is historically or traditionally a passing down. So you want your best receiving back. Similar situation. We'll look at each player down the road, but you can see the ratings down here. Uh, if we look at running backs, so you have their running ability, their run blocking ability, their hands, the ability to catch the ball, route running, which is how how they run a route. This is this determines if they're if they can get open or not, or if they're going to be tightly guarded and harder to get the ball to. Uh, instincts, aggression, acceleration, how fast they can get up to speed. This would be your, I think it's it, it's pace, yeah, it's, it's acceleration in Football Manager. Agility, speed is pace. Uh, strength, 
stronger they are, the more likely they might be to break a tackle. Jumping ability, to go up for a ball or jump over a tackler. Endurance, how long they can play, that's their stamina, how long they can play before they have to come out. And then their overall ratings. Uh, and then you have your fullbacks, wide receivers. So right now I'm just going to hit suggest. Now I'm going to, typically what I do, like this guy's a one, so I'm going to go ahead and pull him off. All I did there was I just swapped out those two guys and I right click. I'm just right clicking. They may not be the right person to pull out, but remember, anybody that's on your bench can be put into the game at any point that the game deems fit <laughs> because it's your assistant coach, your assistant manager that's doing that, right? So you kind of want to limit your bad players from getting on the field. And I do that just simply by going three deep on the depth chart. Now, I don't recommend going any less than three deep. Uh, because if there's injuries during the game, then you could you could have an error and cause the game to crash. So just be careful about that. Same thing with our defense. And now special teams. Biggest factor on special teams is aggression. This is their willingness to run down, put their body on the line, and go in and just smoke somebody. <laughs> you know. Uh, you have your holder, uh, you want somebody with good hands, and then you want have your uh, long snapper. This is the one, you know, because they're snapping the ball 10 yards back or 7 yards back instead of 2 feet back. So usually you have a specialty player in that position. Uh, you have your kickoff and your kicker, which is typically the same person and your punter now my kicker is your your kicker would be your backup punter but he's not very good at it so you kind of hope he never plays so even though he has a better rating he's not going to have the punting ability we can take a look at that there's our kickers and our punters and kicking ability so you can see the two punters are in the teens. My main kicker is a 52. My backup kicker is a 33, which is still three times better than the two punters. But then punting ability, the two punters are six to eight times better than the kicker is. So it, they're both specialty positions. So don't just always go with the colors. Very similar to your football manager uh, ratings. Uh, you have red, which is poor, orange, which is below average, uh, yellow is average, green is above average, and blue is excellent. So that's what the four colors mean. So we've set our depth chart. Now, in offense, there are preset offenses that you can run. And you can see we have red, either no color, red, or blue. These are bonuses. You get a bonus if you run plays in these formations. You get a penalty if you run in the red formations. Doesn't mean those aren't good plays. Depends on your player. So don't be scared uh, to put anything in there. Now you can see if we hit suggest, it changes and pulls out of all those red ones, but don't be afraid to go with that. But And you have to hit suggest to actually see the changes. So a balanced offense, here's your, here's your definition. Uh, now, we're supposed to win the league, but it says we look like a bottom feeder. We rely on running back Craig Scott. So he, our key player is we have a, good, we have a pretty good looking quarterback and a pretty good running back one good receiver, and three of our five starting linemen are at least, you know, are below average, but not much, not really many poor players. We have a few, and those would be the positions we would want to look at improving in recruiting. 
not to mention replacing players' positions that are going to be graduating. Always have to pay attention to that. When we get to recruiting, we'll talk about it. So you have to choose your offense. So balanced is a balance between passing and running. The option is a run-based offense. I don't find option works very well in this game. I usually stay away from it. Run and gun is similar to what the University of Florida ran with Tim Tebow, if you're familiar with that. A lot of shotgun formation, uh, short passing attack. Um, instead of handing the ball off, they, they do short passes to the running back. That basically takes the place of their running game. So, and it tells you what you need, a strong-armed quarterback, a good set of receivers, and a strong pass-blocking offensive line. Math, smash Mouth, you can throw the ball here, but it's primarily a run-oriented attack. Vertical passing is deep passes. You're going to need to be able to pass-block because the quarterback's going to drop farther back, five to seven steps rather than three to five steps, He's going to need more time, typically three to five seconds rather than two to three seconds to drop back and then get rid of the ball. Uh, so, you know, you have to kind of look at that. West Coast is very complicated, which means you got to have an intelligent quarterback. Accuracy. Uh, accuracy would be important more than strength for the quarterback because he's not throwing the ball deep. He's throwing short stuff. So... Um, I'm going to go I'm gonna pop out of here for just a minute. I'm going to go in and we're going to look. So my best quarterback has average arm strength, but, but he's also average touch, intelligence, and instincts. Okay. My running back is a good runner. He's got decent hands. Then my main receiver, I've got two average or above average receivers with average route running. So I'm, I'm actually pretty solid. You can see Faust accuracy is lagging. So if I went with the wet with the run and gun or the West Coast, I might want to actually go with Williams. But then, you know, intelligence and instincts plays a big role in the decision making process so that's kind of a, a not a hidden factor because we know what it is um but i'm trying to decide the other thing is you can see faust is a senior he's already maxed out he's not going to get any better and he will be leaving our program at the end of this season think about it in football manager terms his contract's up and we don't have the option to re-sign him. So um, Williams, on the other hand, is a sophomore. He will be a junior next year, so he has two more years to develop, and he could be just as good. Gordon is a freshman, but he has a lot of upside. So I want to go look at Gordon. We're going to redshirt him if we can. Gordon, we're going to redshirt do that. Let me go through and just see if I want to redshirt anybody else. The other thing I might do is cut a player. I won't be talking during this because I'm just going to be looking. What I'm looking at is their overall, their potential. Now you can only, you, could, you can't cut everybody because you have to have certain amount of players. But like this guy's a sophomore and he's the worst of the bunch. I won't get his scholarship back for two more years, but if I cut him this year, then I will get his scholarship back immediately for the upcoming recruiting season, which will be at the end of this year. We're not going to be able to recruit. It's at the end of the season. We're coming in at the start of the season. Fullbacks, a lot of receivers. Okay. Now this guy, you can see he's already redshirted because of the parentheses so we are going to i'm going to cut this guy because he's a junior and he's not very good so we'll get another scholarship there 
Um, this guy's not on a scholarship, but he's actually better than some of the other guys. So this sophomore, I'm going to cut him as well. Got to have six receivers, I think it is. So I want to take this other freshman. I'm going to redshirt him. All right. Same thing with tight ends. Uh, the senior, I would never cut a senior. He's leaving at the end of this year. We aren't going to recruit until the end of this year, so we will get his scholarship back so it doesn't benefit us. But you have to make these cut decisions at this time of the year uh, and the redshirt decision because you can't you can only do it at this one time of the year now we've got a couple of weeks but i just assume do it now um we do have a freshman so i'm going to go ahead and redshirt him the other thing i look at is guys without scholarship they don't help me any but that's kind of that, that means they're a walk-on they walked onto your team freely uh, they're paying tuition they're not on a scholarship means they're typically not very good. And you can see with a one and a half potential, not very good. Uh, now, we do have a freshman in here. So we're going to redshirt him. Again, this is a senior. I would normally cut him because he's the worst player. Uh, Garrison is a freshman, also only a one. So I'm going to cut him. Really nobody else to redshirt. Now, Shaw, the S means that he is projected to be a starter because we've already done our depth charts. And you want to do that first, so this tells you who your starters are in your depth chart. So I could cut Collins, but it doesn't gain me any. Uh, three centers, we need at least three. I'm going to go ahead and cut this freshman with a one. He can't get any better. Need four here. I only need three here. Now there's a three-four defense, which means you play with two inside and two outside linebackers. There's a four-three defense where you play with two outside but only one inside. I think you need at least three, but if you have if you're playing with a with a three-four, you probably want to carry at least four. And Beavers is not on scholarship. I'm going to go ahead and cut him to get his scholarship. He's the worst player, which means I have a chance in the next recruiting to potentially upgrade, right? And potentially upgrade. In a senior, two seniors. I'm going to go ahead and cut this guy because he's not on scholarship. Scholarship players are just better. Now, this freshman is already considered a starter. This guy's a senior, so even though he's the worst, I'm not going to get rid of him. Everybody there. Then all the safeties are grouped together, and you need three of each, so I can't get rid of anybody there. You need two kickers, two punters, so we're good there. So we've redshirted a few players. Let's go back to our depth chart, and you can see we've only got two quarterbacks so we're going to redo that and then anybody that's four deep going to get rid of now the receivers i won't because we're going to play two or three receivers at a time so you're going to want a third and fourth string receiver on your roster All right so we've gone through we've redone our depth chart so let's go back into offense so i want to I'm going to go West Coast and hit Suggest. Now, this is where you can come in and tweak this. Every category has to equal 100%, and this is your percentage of plays. We'll talk about game planning when we get to the season. But right now, it says we're going to use the Pro Set. We're going to use the Single Back Set. We're going to use a Weak Formation. So a weak and a strong formation. You have five offensive linemen and then your tight end. Whatever side your tight end lines up on is the strong side. So the fullback, because he's lining up opposite of the strong side, makes this a weak formation. 
just where the fullback is lining up in relation to the tight end who is on the strong side. If the fullback was over on this side, then that would be a strong side right there. So, and it doesn't mean you won't run plays this way. Just gives a different look and some different options. So these are the these are only the suggestions. You can see the two categories we get bonuses, five categories we will get penalized. So we're going to go with that. We're going to use the default. We'll go there, West Coast. Defense. Now, what's different? So you notice I said earlier, when you change this, you have to hit the Suggest button in order to change this information. On the defensive side, you don't need to do that. As you scroll through, formation will change and your structure will change. Now we're still going to hit suggest because you notice all that's changing is the categories that have bonuses and penalties, but nothing is showing up there. Everything is staying. So you always want to make sure you hit suggest. Now, personally, personally, I only use the 4-3 or the 3-4. I've tried the 425 and had a horrible season with it. The 46 was made popular by the Chicago Bears in the NFL back in 1985, considered one of the best defenses in the in league history. Uh, but it it requires some really specific things, uh, really good cornerbacks, fast linebackers, a good safety. And as a lower team, we don't have a shot at getting that. So the big question I look at is how many below average players do I have? I know from doing my depth chart and my red shirts and cuts a little while ago, I've got at least the ability to start two inside linebackers. When there's only one, it's called a middle linebacker. Same thing. Just you have your two outside, you have a weak side, a strong side. Again, that's just determining where that tight end on the offense is. Like. And then you have your middle or inside. If we look at a fourth, uh, a three, four, you have a middle and an inside. They're both inside. Just one is kind of like the defensive captain, if you want to think of it that way. So here's what I'm looking at a four, three. I've got one red player on the field. But red is the worst, right? So that means I have one below, you know, one below average player. In a 3-4, I don't have any. So that's the one I want to go with. I just view that that's putting your best players on the field. So we're going to go with that. We've checked all the boxes and advanced the week. Again, you get a warning. Now that we've progressed, we can never go back until next season. So keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to end the episode here. We're going to come back for the next episode. We will pick up from here. We've got scheduling. Uh, I'm going to do the scheduling off camera. I think we'll come back. We'll start with scheduling. I'll show you how to schedule a game. And then I'll do the scheduling off camera. And then we'll come back for red shirts, which we've mostly already done. Setting depth charts. This is also where you can train someone for a new position, I think. And uh, cut players. So we'll do that next episode. So if you like what I'm doing here, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel, especially if you're new. And uh, make some comments below. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Are you looking forward to this save? Uh, and if you have any specific questions on anything we've covered, ask away. Take care, guys.